Uh, this video is on capacitive reactants and it's part two of a series. So here I rewrote the equation again, just this quick review for you, that uh, the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the frequency times the capacitance, which it can, been, it can be rewritten as 1 divided by the angular frequency multiplied by the capacitance. Angular frequency is just nothing more than 2 times pi times the frequency. Um, over here you could also get uh, the capacitive reactance by dividing the voltage of the capacitor by the capacitance or the current of the capacitor. And I went to the liberty of just, uh, if you divide 1 by 2 pi, you're going to get about 0.159. And I just do this just to, uh, so I don't have to rewrite 1 or uh, 2 pi. So here I just want to also reemphasize that. As the frequency increases, the capacitive reactance will decrease. Also, as the capacitance increases, the capacitive reactance will decrease. Okay, so now we got those down there. Now let's go on and start doing some problems. So the first problem is I want you to find the capacitive reactance of a 10, uh, 10 farad capacitor first at uh, 1 gigahertz and then at 1 kilohertz. So here I already wrote the, the formula, and I wrote it with a 0.159 instead of writing the 2 pi. So now all we need to do is just plug and chug. So let's plug in some values. So first thing, uh, we're going to write 0.159 divided by the frequency, which the frequency here was uh, 1 gigahertz. So 1 times 10 uh, to the 9 and by the capacitance. The capacitance is a 10 farad capacitor, so multiplied by 10. So if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to come up with, uh, well, 1.59 uh, E, which is the same thing as uh, saying times 10, uh, to the negative 11 ohms. Or you can just rewrite it as, uh, uh, 15.9 pico ohms. So that's a pretty small number. So now let's go to the next one over here. How about at 1 kilohertz? Let's see what happens here. So at 1 kilohertz, let's, uh, let's write down the formula. Uh, capacitive reactance uh, is equal to 0.159 over the frequency multiplied by the capacitance. So the frequency here is 1 kilohertz. So 0.159 divided by 1 kilohertz multiplied by the capacitance, which is the 10 farads. Uh, and then for this, if you plug that into your calculator, you're going to come up with uh, 1.59 e to the negative 5 ohms. Or you could just write it as 15 point nine micro ohms and that's how you would solve those two so you can tell right away that uh, this this uh, capacitive reactance is much larger than this capacitive reactance and you know the only difference is the the frequency this frequency is much larger than this frequency so that uh, that makes sense so let's go on to problem number two so here what capacitance is needed in order to obtain a one mega ohm capacitive reactance at a frequency of 10 Hertz. So for this one, we're going to again use this formula. The capacitive reactance is equal to, well, this right here. And I'm going to rewrite the 2 pi, uh, the 1 over 2 pi as 0.159. And, you know, that's, that's the frequency, or that's the equation right there. But we want to solve for the capacitance for this guy. So we have to rewrite this equation. So all you have to do is just multiply this side by, by C and this side by C. And then you just divide by the capacitive reactance to bring it over, and you're left with this. So uh, this is how we're going to solve for it. So now at this point right here where the capacitance is equal to 0 0.159 divided by the frequency multiplied by the capacitive reactance. So now at this point you just need to plug in the values, and we can just solve it. So 0.159 divided by the frequency, and what was the frequency? At a frequency of 10 hertz. So we've got 10 hertz here. 
And then we wanted to obtain a 1 mega ohm capacitive reactant, so 1 mega ohm. So if you plug this into your calculator, you're going to end up with a capacitance. Well, remember, since we have 0.159 in there, it's just about, it's roughly, it's pretty close, but not exact. About 1.59 times 10 to the negative 8, which is the exact same thing as saying 1.59 e to the negative 8. So yeah, that's how you would do that one. Uh, I hope these made sense. If, uh, if it didn't make too much sense, I recommend going back and checking out uh, the first uh, part one of this series, So, because I go a little more in depth into it. So hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I hope it made sense to you. So good luck in your classes.